What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Way, where today we will be talking to you about working remotely, but more specifically, working remotely as a full-time traveler. That's right. We're going to be giving you guys some helpful tips on what your best options are for work on the road and actually giving you some information on how to actually find and secure those job opportunities. So stay tuned. When working from the road, you can pretty much break down jobs into three main categories. The first one we're going to be discussing is work camping. The second one being online or computer-based jobs. And the third option is going to be location-specific temporary jobs or contract work. All right, so let's get right into the first one, work camping. If you don't know what it is, really, it's where you take your RV to a specific site and work for a campsite or RV resort, and they pretty much cover either your living expenses, pay you a wage, or give you access to the amenities. There's not really one size fits all, and they all kind of do different things. Yeah, they pretty much break it down in a way that um, they'll give you some combination of those options. It kind of just depends on which job opportunity you go for. So how do you actually find a work camping job? Well, in this day and age, it's just like anything else, you're pretty much gonna go on the internet or hear word of mouth from somebody else. But we're gonna be focusing on what you can find on the internet. Now there's two different types of sites when it comes to work camping jobs, just like other types of job sites. Um, you can either get a subscription based website to help you find work camping jobs or there are websites that are just accessible to everyone. And the main one that we used when we found a work camping opportunity was just called workcampingjobs.com. You were able to search based off of location, um, time of year that you were wanting to work, stuff like that. A lot of work camping jobs are seasonal as a lot of RV parks and campsites are seasonal themselves. Um, there are year round opportunities. There's uh, variance in contract durations. Um, you can pretty much narrow down your search on the site to find what suits you the best. And we will link um, a couple of the you know more major websites that we're aware of in the description as well. Now you may be wondering what actually goes into these jobs and if you're qualified for them even. So I'm gonna go through just a couple basic requirements of what all of these jobs are more or less looking for. Number one is can they trust you? Are you able to be left alone to do a task without supervision? That's super important because a lot of the time you will be left alone to do these tasks and there won't be a lot of people to really access to ask your questions to because leading into my second point, you'll be working potentially some odd hours. Now, some jobs will be just, you know, regular, you know, daytime shifts, but others, you're gonna be expected to be available pretty much all hours of the night to receive people and you just make sure everybody is taken care of. Um, the third and I think most important aspect to any requirement for a work camping job is, are you willing to get your hands dirty? Are you able-bodied to actually do the tasks that they're requiring you to do. A lot of them is, you know, cleaning the bathrooms, doing the laundry, just any odds and ends that require that make a facility up and running. And, you know, a little bonus one of that I'll add on to being able-bodied is are you handy and have tools? Because a lot there's always something that goes wrong <laughs> at the RV resorts. That we always have something going wrong somewhere and somebody comes along to fix it for us. So it's a, it's a big plus if you're looking for a work camping job. Okay, so what are some of the benefits of work camping? So first off, you know, it's a great way to meet people that do what you do. Um, I, you know, we've been traveling full time for a while now and sometimes being on the road can be a little bit isolating. Um, you're not around your friends and family and stuff like that. And having a work camping job is a great way to have coworkers and people around you that you see every day kind of to have a more normal existence to what you might already be used to. And secondly, also people that are pretty like-minded to you because they're doing what you're doing. People that really understand what it's like to be a full-time traveler. Um, that's a huge benefit and I don't want that to be something that's passed over because as I said, after being isolated on the road, like you will come to value that more than you likely maybe think at this point if you are not already traveling full-time. It's a, a very invaluable thing 
uh, when you're on the road to be able to make friends and hang out with people. Um, another thing is that a lot of times you're gonna get amenity perks from wherever you're staying. If you're staying at a nice RV resort or a cool campground, you're gonna probably have some cool things available to you, possibly for free at or, or at a big discount. Um, we were camped at a hot springs resort and it was like having a, our own private hot springs pool in our backyard. Like I said, I worked off hours. So when it was my day off, we pretty much had the park to ourselves. And it was, I mean, stuff like that, you can't really put a price tag on. It's a, it's a big perk and it can uh, make for an enjoyable stay at a place. Um, another aspect of work camping that's pretty positive is you're likely going to be going to locations that are optimal for their time of year. So, you know, a lot of RV parks and campgrounds are obviously going to hire on more staff when it's a busier time of year. And a busier time of year is going to be when people want to go on vacation there. So whether or not the place is known for, you know, a nice winter getaway to avoid the harsh winters or a beautiful fall location, those uh, job opportunities are typically going to follow the optimal time of year to be in a certain location and that's a big plus a for just you know being in your RV for practical reasons but also for enjoyment's sake and you know another side note to that is a lot of times you might not be able to get into these types of RV parks if you weren't work camping in the sense that you know sometimes you might work camp at a place that's been booked out for years that you know maybe had you not come on as a work camper you probably would have never gotten to go to that location so something to keep in mind as another plus with work camping and you know the final work camping positive which you know might not always be the case but i would like to say that on the whole most people that we talked to when we were interviewing and trying to select a work camping job most of the people are very friendly you're very likely to find a boss that's pretty laid back and you know as long as you're doing your job and doing what you know they're asking you to do they're generally going to be pretty friendly and nice people there's a lot of uh, genuine and kind people in this community so that's a big plus on the flip side of that there are some other aspects to work camping that might not necessarily be a benefit. I'm sure everybody has had that coworker that they didn't necessarily have the best relationship with. Well, now that person is your neighbor and you have to live with them. So something to definitely keep or in mind. Or your landlord. <laughs> or your landlord. Your boss is now your landlord as well. So definitely something to keep in mind when choosing that work camping job. One thing that a lot of work camping opportunities will try to do, not always, but sometimes, is they're not as regulated and they really try to leverage that, you know, free or partially free space in their prime real estate park. And sometimes they pay you less than a minimum wage because they're able to, you know, kind of categorize that as your payment too. So really kind of be choosy in what you're kind of getting for your services. Cause not everyone is really worth the opportunity. Some of them most definitely are though. Yeah, really get that calculator out and make sure that the wage that they're offering you offset to what they would be charging you to stay there is actually, you know, giving you bang for your buck and not just them making it sound like a good deal when it's not. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you want this to be your experience and you don't want to have to sacrifice this lifestyle that you worked so hard for in order to, you know, help somebody meet a budget line. Mm -hmm. But the last, you know, kind of detractor that I'll add to the work camping opportunities is really a lot of people get into this lifestyle for the freedom that it presents and being able to see new places. Whereas, you know, you're kind of locked into a location for at least a season if you're work camping. So it's definitely something to keep in mind that if you're looking to move fast, then this isn't really gonna be the best opportunity for you. It does, however, kind of present the opportunity to see a lot of really interesting places for long durations of time, which when you're traveling, having traveled fast and slow, there is definitely a benefit from being able to kind of set up roots in an area and get to experience it for what it is. Yeah, it really just sort of depends on what you want. I think at the end of the day though, the reason we're putting this as a drawback is because really in reality, it's just that it's not really up to you. Once you take that job, 
you're there for how, however long you kind of agree to do that contract. I mean, unless something happens and you leave early and you have other work opportunities. But for the most part, you're not going to be as independent as maybe you set out to be if this wasn't something you were already considering. And if you're not withholding those obligations to work for a season, you know, it's going to be harder and harder to get new work camping opportunities because your previous one won't want to give you a reference if you're just leaving before your contract was up. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so now let's move on to talking about online jobs. So what can an online job be? It's pretty self-explanatory, right? You're working on a computer online in some capacity. Um, there's a wide range of opportunities within that. Uh, and I'll kind of discuss some of the ones that we've done. Um, you know, I've done tutoring. We've both done contract video production work. I've done freelance writing work. Um, there is so many options outside of that even. There's a lot of assistant roles, accounting roles, uh, sales positions, you name it. And especially right now uh, with COVID and everything, there are more remote job opportunities than ever. So you may be asking yourself, how do I actually get one of these online jobs? Maybe you have a field that transfers nicely into the online marketplace or Maybe this would represent a career shift for you where you're having to maybe take a pay cut in order to get a job. But there are plenty of options out there, thankfully, since, you know, if COVID is good for one thing, it's the implementation of online and remote work. So job sites like Indeed, LinkedIn.com, you know, social networking and, you know, ch checking that filter box for remote or work from anywhere is really powerful and there's actually a lot of opportunity to do that that sort of thing and you know maybe the full-time staff with benefits option isn't necessarily an option with your amount of experience in a said field but if you're looking to sort of build up your experience an online marketplace like upwork.com might be a better option for you i personally have had a lot of success freelancing on upwork through video production and graphic design and, you know, maybe it's the chance to really become a writer or, you know, just do that skill set that you've always wanted to do, but haven't necessarily had the opportunity to do in the or past. Or hone in your own client base. I mean, you pretty much already had the skill sets as an editor and an animator before you went to Upwork, but he didn't have the platform of his own customers, right? And so I think even that in and of itself created a lot of job opportunities. Um, you know, just building up your resume and portfolio to get work down the road. Mm -hmm. All right, so what are some of the actual requirements for working remotely from the road? Just because you are a remote worker doesn't necessarily mean that it's never going to come up that you need to be in a specific location at a certain time. You know, companies have meetings, job events, corporate events all the time that just because you get a job and you're fully remote does not mean that you might not be expected to travel for work specifically at some point in time. So be very transparent with your job and your boss about what your living situation is and make sure that your lifestyle fits well within the company that you are trying to actually work for. No matter where you are, you will be expected to have a reliable internet speed. With remote work being what it is nowadays, you know, platforms like Zoom and all of these things are very common. You're gonna be expected to be on phone calls most likely or video chats at times. When I'm tutoring, I'm doing that over video chat platforms most of the time. You need to have a good connection. People don't want you cutting in and out. They don't wanna be, not be able to hear you or see you or having, you know, unreliable issues all the time. Um, and this is a very important one when it comes to online working and it's actually one that requires a lot more discussion so this is something that we will actually be posting about next week. So please stay tuned for that video because it's going to have a lot of helpful tips in there. We have been doing this for about three years now and we have learned our lessons on many occasions when it comes to getting the best internet connection possible for our situation. Um, Working in various time zones is a common thing that's going to come up when you are working remotely. So be able to keep track of those things just because you might be on the East Coast if your company's on the West Coast, keep that in mind when you're applying that you might be working a little bit of odd hours if that's the case. Um, you know, if you, even if you're doing contract work, I'm constantly having to keep track of who I'm working for and where they're located. People are not the best at saying like, oh, we'll have a meeting at 10. I'm like, well, 
10 what time, <laughs> you know? So, um, most Where people- Where are you in the world? Yeah, people don't think like that if they're not doing this very commonly. So um, just keep that in mind because that could really easily mess you up a, a time or two if you're not careful. Uh, so just be aware of that. And also, yeah, just be aware if you're taking a full-time position that it's going to adjust when you are expected to be working based off of where you are in the world and where most of your company is in the world. So important to keep in mind for sure. And lastly, a big requirement that is, um, you know, something that you probably already would have thought of is that you really need to be kind of a self-starter and be able to work hard on your own. When you're working remotely, you're not having a boss or a coworker or somebody around you to kind of you know, keep you motivated. You have to really be able to self-motivate and get your work done on your own. And, you know, your work will show. So if you're slacking off, it's not gonna be a secret. It will come, uh, become apparent. And, um, you know, companies are still gonna have these same expectations of you, whether or not you are in the office or working from home. So just keep that in mind that if that's something that you struggle with, it might be, uh, you know, an added challenge, something that you have to figure out in order to be successful at a remote online job. Now, what are some of the benefits to working an online job from the road? Well, I'll tell you for one thing, if you get a job that you can work from anywhere, it really offers you that flexibility to work from anywhere. And it is great when it is gelling and everything's going well. And I would highly recommend it because it has allowed us the opportunity to see some really cool places at a really breakneck, breakneck pace. Or at our own pace, whatever that may be. <laughs> and you know, another thing is that if your job allows for it, your schedule can be flexible. Maybe you work 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., you know? Maybe you guys are really good morning people. You're not going into an office place to actually like meet people from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., so why not take advantage of it if your workplace allows for it? The biggest benefit that we've experienced is really if you get an online job, it's most likely to offer benefits. It's not always the case, but you're more likely to probably find it in this situation than in other situations. And dealing with insurance and, you know, medical care from all 48 states is sometimes a major, major challenge. So getting the good benefits to go along with that job package is a huge plus. But let's go and transition into what actually some of the drawbacks are for working online remote. Well, the first one is kind of based around the internet thing that we mentioned earlier. When you are relying off of your computer and your internet for work, it is just that. You have to be able to rely off of it and you need a good internet connection. You need a good computer setup. And sometimes that takes a little more legwork and effort on your part and diligence. And you might still run into issues from time to time. And no matter what your job is, that's gonna be on you, regardless of if it was an unpredictable, unforeseen situation. You know, it's not the same as being in an office where, you know, maybe their hard drives or their internet goes out and they kind of are like, oh, whoops, our bad. Um, it's really on you at that point to have your technology and your internet up and running and doing what it needs to do. So sometimes that can be a drawback or just an added kind of stressor aspect to working full-time remote online. Um, online full-time remote jobs can be harder to come by. So keep that in mind, you know, as we mentioned, you know, you might have to have skill sets in various areas if you're really trying to land that full-time job role uh, that really has benefits and good opportunities for you and your family. Um, so just keep that in mind that it might be a little bit harder to actually secure one of those positions first off and second off, while there are more opportunities available because of COVID, it is also very in demand right now. So the competition is high and it can be a little bit more of a challenge in that regard as well to actually secure and find a job because you are going up against a lot more people. Remote work has never been as desirable as it is right now. The third and final category that we'll be covering in this video are those location-based contract jobs. The duration can really vary from three to six months to one to two years, or even more open termed if that's what you're into. In addition, the skill sets that they're looking for can really vary widely, whether it be, you know, seasonal harvest, like in the farming industry, or more of a technical skill set 
in the nursing or construction industries. And there's actually a high volume if you get on those Indeed and LinkedIn websites, there's a lot of temporary jobs. Amazon is a huge proprietor for temporary jobs when their season picks up high volume or, you know, really year round as well. So if you go online, you can filter your search for temporary jobs, even on sites like Indeed, and you're likely to find something in a category that you either have experience in or would be interested in working in. So keep that in mind, even on basic websites. But there's also websites that are specific for temporary work. Um, flex jobs or um, ZipRecruiter are really big for you know, focusing and honing in on temporary work. And if you have a field like nursing and you want to be a travel nurse or something like that, you can focus on job sites that are specific to what your skill set is. And as with any job, word of mouth is a big thing. Once you get into working temporary jobs and contracts, it can, you know, kind of add on um, through knowing people in your industry. Some of the requirements for these location-based contract jobs are a little more straightforward. If you're qualified for nursing work, then you'll be qualified for nursing work. Or if you have construction experience, you're probably more likely to get more construction work. So really pretty straightforward there. But the main point about these jobs is you'll be expected to be in a location for a specific amount of time and live and work in that area. So what are some of the benefits of doing a location-based contract temporary job? Well, to start, you probably stand to make a little bit more money than a work camping opportunity. So these two categories I'm comparing more specifically because they're a little less location independent than the online working category. So when you compare it to work camping, location-based contracts, you're way more likely to meet a higher wage and possibly even find a job with benefits. So that's a huge plus in this category right out the gate. Secondly, you're more likely, just like with work camping, to make friends and work with people that you either relate to because they travel full time like you or they're in an industry that you work in as well. And that is an invaluable thing when you are on the road to build a community of people that you can relate to and that you can talk to when you're away from friends and family, especially on holidays and weekends and stuff like that. Having people that you can hang out with and chat with is a really rewarding thing to have when you are on the road. And lastly, the added benefit of, you know, there's not as much commitment with these jobs. They are temporary jobs. It's not like having a full-time job that goes on forever. So, you know, if you have a three to six months contract and you don't like it, well, it'll be over in three to six months or whatever the contract is. Or if it's open-ended, uh, you might be able to just give notice and leave and find another contract job depending on your experience in that field. So there is a lot of flexibility in that regard in this category. So some of the drawbacks to these location-based contracts are, you know, unlike work camping where you're chasing the best times of the year is the work is where it is. So you might be forced to work through some of the more challenging times of year, whether that be the extreme times of winter or the extreme times of summer. So just something to really keep in mind there. And then with that sort of, you know, open-ended contract, you may not have as much notice when the work is going to run out, whether it be farming or oil or whatever. You need to kind of account for that in your plan and maybe save more money and be more flexible with your possible unexpected work ending without a whole yeah, lot if of you, notice. If you have an if you're working in oil field and that runs out, then you might be out of work earlier than you expected. So it's something to definitely take into account when accepting a contract like that. Well, on any company too, I mean, if they're running out of work, the temporary employees are the first to go and they're not going to give you a whole lot of heads up if that's the case. So, yeah. Yeah. And with, with location specific work, you know, it really limits your ability to be location independent. So where as online work allows you to be super location independent, this really kind of grounds you to a community. So if that's a negative for you, it's something to keep in mind. Uh, and then the final drawback is really, you're gonna be going to a specific location to do a job. So if you have pets or 
you know, whatever that you need to be checking up on regularly in your RV, it's not really going to allow you the flexibility to do that most likely. So just really be able to plan out your day and, uh, you know, we have a camera system set up in our RV to be able to check on our dogs if we're gone for extended periods of time. So a couple of different things kind of add up to some drawbacks, but not necessarily a game breaker if this is something that you're qualified for. No, it's just always something to take into account that it's much different to work in your RV than it is to work out of your RV. So you have to think about those various aspects of any type of job role that you accept. All right, so those are really the three main categories that when it comes down to it are most available and common for full-time travel remote work. We've got work camping, we've got online remote work, and we have location-dependent temporary contracts. If you have any other ideas that we didn't cover, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Check out the description for helpful links to some of the things that we discussed, and as always, thanks for traveling with us, guys. Bye.